the Hey, how are you? I'm really good. How are you? Good. I'm so excited to have you on my plus one interview segment. It's just so Thank nice. You. Uh for those I'm of you for those of you who don't know, we were able to uh reconnect um not too long ago, like a week, couple weeks ago, right? And yeah. it was so magical and it was so fun and I loved it. And then um I was like, Hannah, come on my stream. Let's do this. And so here we go. We've got it. You're on my stream. Yes. It's so great to be here. Thank you. And it was so much fun hanging. I hope we can hang all the time and do all the things we said we were going to do while I we know. hung out because we made like 50,000 plans. We did. We did. We actually made a lot of plans. We made like a ton of plans and I have them all written down too. Like we, oh God, yeah. yeah, basically Hannah and I are going to save the world pretty much with all of the plans <laughs> that we're making. Um, but so yeah, for those of you who may not know who Hannah is, Hannah, can you introduce yourself? Uh, to the folks out there watching. Yes. Hi, I'm Hannah Tell. I'm a singer, songwriter, and actress. I live in Los Angeles, but I'm from North Carolina. Awesome. And uh, for those of uh, the folks out there that may know you from uh, a role, what role would that be? Yes, I'm most well known for my role as Max Caulfield in Life is Strange. Heck yeah. I love that. <laughs> so I wanted just to jump in. Um, to your acting so so how did you get started acting and we haven't even talked about this personally so I'm very excited to, to hear about like how you got started in the acting journey well I was just riding in the back seat I was like six years old and I saw a billboard I recently learned like just a couple years ago learned to read and not a year ago but at the time I had just recently learned to like read billboards and I saw at the high school they were like advertising for a children's theater audition um, a children's theater workshop audition. And I was like, my God, I have to do it, mama, please. And so she let me do it and um, I loved it. And then I started trying to do every single community theater play that I could do. And I'd make my parents drive me like, bless my, God bless my parents. <laughs> they had to drive me like 45 minutes to an hour away every day so I could go rehearse and be Oliver and Oliver. And it was just like, I was just obsessed. And um yeah, that's how I got started. I love that. So you grew up doing community theater. So you started out in the theater. Yeah, yeah. I always find a connection as just like, because I was an actor that started out in the theater as well, too. So it's just always nice to like connect with other actors who started out in the theater. I just feel like there's just this like common understanding about, I don't know, performing that a stage actor or that a, a film actor might not have if they've never been on the stage before. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I have a high respect for, for folks who started out in the theater. So. That's cool. Oh, thank you. And Likewise. also, your first role was Oliver? No, oh, no. Okay. My first role was in the chorus in some musical when I was like seven years old. And then, yeah, I was Oliver and Oliver when I was 11 or 12. That's so I wore cool. A wig. I was really into I really wanted to be a professional child actor. But I, I lived in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and my parents were like, absolutely not. <laughs> so, so yeah you had this like dry I love that I love that so much they're like we can do community theater and then nice and then um when did you I guess make your move to film uh I started doing film when I moved to LA to go to USC to study acting and I met a bunch of, I was really into film and so I was taking a cinema class so I met a bunch of film students and I would like befriended them and they put me in their student films Heck and yeah. so that was a very exciting time for me <laughs> yeah yeah and then um so you're out here studying acting in USC and what what was the timeline between um working on Life is Strange and going to school and where where did that all line up well, it was well, it was quite some time after. I okay. went to USC in 2006 and then I dropped out in 2009 and then I just did like any indie film or whatever acting role I could get off Actors Access for like 10 years. And then I turned Oh, no, no. And then I turned like 27 and I got Life is Strange. Yes. And that that was when like things finally came like to fruition and it was like I finally received some sort of like reward because yeah. every other project that I had been in that I thought I was like this is it this is it it went nowhere yeah and like 
things that I spent months working on and like paid to be in, like in terms of like flying myself places, getting putting myself up in hotels, just doing whatever I could do to like make it happen. Um, they like never even got finished. So Life is Strange happening was like huge. Wow. Yeah, I mean, they say too, they say 10 years, right? Takes 10 years to, to make it out here. So I mean, there you go, yeah. 10 years and you booked it. That's pretty great. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So would you prefer voice acting or on screen acting now that you've done Life is Strange? Do you, you, what do you enjoy more? Um, they're both so drastically different and they both um, satisfy and kind of like quench different aspects of like my performance style. I, I can't really choose one. I, I, uh, I think I'm might I have no idea. It's hard. No, I I yeah. agree. I agree. Like for me personally, it's the same situation. I mean, like you you, it's it's different like parts of your brain that are working, right? And like it's it feels nice both ways. You know, like it's it's nice to be in front of a camera, but it's also nice just to be in a booth and like just to have everything kind of like close and compact and like just feels not like it feels good. I don't know. Yeah. So I get that. I get that. What about let me throw stage in there. Where does stage line up? Uh, well, stage is amazing and probably my favorite, but uh, my voice um, gets tired and worn out really quickly. So projecting is kind of hard for me. And that's mm -hmm. another reason why voiceover can be hard for me because it's just four hours of like nonstop talking. And by the end, like I, I just, it's hard. And I also have asthma. Mm -hmm. So like my, I get out of breath and I saw, that's a lot of reason why I think I sound kind of breathy a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, so that's really awesome because um, in voiceover, they can't see you unless there's a window into the booth and they're looking at you. And then I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, no, turn it around. Stop looking at me. I can't do this. But like on camera, you know, it, I think like I signed up to be looked at. So I'm like, okay, all right. Let's yeah. Look. Uh, that's one of the best things is just going into a voiceover booth, just looking like garbage and it doesn't matter because like, no, you don't need to put makeup on. Like no one cares. Like it's the best. It's the yeah, best. Yeah. So then if you could land any role in the industry, whether it be film or, or with voiceover or even stage, what kind of role would you love to try out? Oh my goodness. Um, I think I've said this in an interview before, but I, I would just love to play Stevie Nicks or Joni Mitchell or any like, 1960s or 70s female singer songwriter luminary um whether it be like on a tv show like daisy jones and the yeah. six or like in a movie about the, like a biopic um that would be my all that's my ultimate acting dream yeah i could totally see stevie nicks wait that's okay we're gonna manifest that hannah we gotta manifest that for you yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so cool if you could give a, your best piece of advice for someone who may be starting out in the industry, who, you know, you just want to equip with like the one piece of knowledge that they could go with moving, like go have, take, take in moving forward. What would that be? Yes. Uh, that's an easy question for me. Um, something I resisted for a long time and it really held me back. Get in class, go on the internet, find out where the best acting classes are in your city and get in there and take all the classes you can take with as many different teachers as you can study with and don't ever stop. And um, when I stop, that's when I like reach a point of, point of stagnancy and I like start doubting myself. And even in the class, like I doubt myself, but it's just so inspiring to be around other actors who are striving to be working actors or already are working actors. So that's my advice. That's, that's, I love that. That's some good advice. I love that. Okay, yeah, so I'm moving. Right <laughs> what was that? I'm in class right now. I was going to ask. Are, yeah, you are in class? Yeah, I have class tomorrow night. Heck yeah. Is it just, is it a scene study class? Is it like a monologue class, commercial? What is it? Uh, it's, it's a little brutal. Um, and I like the brutal ones because you have to have really thick skin on yeah. set um, and in auditions. Uh, it's just like a but comedy based. Okay. Um, like studying different types of like multi camera, single camera, um, like t mostly like TV based acting. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, there you go, guys. Stay in class. And Hannah's also in class, so yeah, she's taking her own advice. <laughs> so moving on to life is strange questions. There was a lot of uh, folks who had some some good questions out there for you. And thank you all so much for the great questions. We really appreciate it. Um, so this one you probably answered before, but 
what was it like voicing Max? Did you find it easy or hard? I know it was so long ago. So, <laughs> well, um, I just remember it being very rewarding and very challenging. Um, I had never had a lead role in a, in a video game before, and uh, I had never done a um, like a, a, a lead voiceover role either. So I, this is actually my first like big voiceover job. So I really didn't know what I was doing um, in terms of like where to stand and how to control your voice and enunciating and being aware of mouth sounds, which is my freaking demise or even worse, stomach sounds. Cause <laughs> I have like, my stomach is so I'm an anxious stressed out person so my stomach is like world war three and it's loud and like you can hear it anyway i won't go into it but like it's just yeah there's a lot of technicalities of being a voice actor that i had no clue about that i had to learn on like on the spot um trial by fire kind of thing mm -hmm. and uh, so that was very challenging for me and also it was very challenging because um what max is going through uh with discovering that she has powers or whatever that was like extremely um I, I i'm not the type of actor who can just like do it and then like to make a joke mm -hmm. um or like make a joke and then and then go into recording a take um i just uh i get, have to get really into it to make it real for myself and like i have to dredge up stuff that isn't necessarily like that healthy for me to dredge up and i don't always get out of it super quick so there'd be a lot of t days after doing voiceover sessions on life is strange where I would like go to my car and just cry. Like I was like, I just needed to like let it out. It was mm -hmm. just so high pressure. I'd never experienced anything like that before. Yeah. Wow. So talking about like having to get into the mindset of Max and, and having to dredge up those emotions for yourself. Um, could you talk a little bit about how you and Max are similar and how you both are different? Yeah. That that also is like ties into the previous question, like the parts that were easy for me, because there were some parts of playing her that came so natural and like second nature to me. Um, just like her timidness, her introvertedness, her desire to not be so introverted and not be so timid, but she doesn't even really know at the beginning of the game that she needs or wants that. Mm -hmm. um, like she can't even imagine like what life would be like on the other side of her own like withdrawn um but boundaries and um just like sometimes I feel like Max might feel like she's got a glass wall between her and everyone else around her and like when she's with Chloe maybe she doesn't feel that wall that glass wall so strongly and I really relate to that um something that it's like some kind of uh, psychological thing that I experience like feeling like I'm separated from the other person I'm talking with unless it's like a very certain person where I'm like, you mm -hmm. know, I can through. Cool. I love that. Um, Thanks. Do you have any most memorable moments that you can remember from that long ago that you had on set? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember a lot of moments like they just happened yesterday. Wow. Um, yeah, I guess like, I guess my most memorable moment was at the very end, the last day I record. I think I, uh, yeah, the last day I recorded with Ashley and we were saying goodbye to each other uh, as actresses. And then also we were filming like our final scene together where you're choosing between Bay and Bay, And um, like, who, are you gonna choose the love of your life or are you gonna save this whole town, including her family and you know everybody that you grew up with? So uh, just like us saying goodbye to each other in that moment in the game, but also as two actresses that had come together and experienced something that we never thought would happen with this indie game. By the end, we'd come, both come so far and had furthered our careers so much. Um, and we were just like, well, my God, this is it. Like, I love you and like, thank you. And like, we really carried this game together. And like, as in terms of the acting and like, it, it, we like made this together and it was just really special. Mm. So talking about that, like, th then how was it when you got to come back for Farewell? Oh, yeah, that was, that was really awesome, too. Like, we, we had just been told so, like, specifically that there will be no more, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so it had been, like, it, I think it was, like, two years later 
the, yeah, in 2017, when, when we got, when I got the call from my agent, he was like, oh, by the way, they're, you know, they're doing another game. And it, it, and it was just like so exciting to yeah. get to have it work out. And um, there was also a strike going on then. So I actually couldn't do it. And we, I didn't think that either one of us were going to get to do it. And then everything kind of came together for the farewell, like little finale yeah. extra episode. And that was just like, it was awesome to work with her again. It was so good. I love I mean, man, that that episode is is heart wrenching. That episode is so oh. sad, like so sad, uh, but yeah. so good. So good. So uh, going off a little bit more uh, about ta- uh, working with Ashley. So you en- you enjoyed it, obviously. Do you guys still uh, do you guys still keep in touch or um, we, we have the same agent? Oh, so cool. like we're, we see each other at like agency functions. That's cool. Which haven't happened in a while because yeah. there was pandemic and whatnot. But I suspect that there will be a holiday party this year that we might reunite. Yeah, <laughs> and if we do, we're gonna totally take a photo. Yeah, take a photo. <laughs> um, but yeah, Ashley's Ashley's very busy, and she's in a different stratosphere. Mm-hmm. And I like I I just love that I got to work with her. Like yeah. it's just like crazy to me. So yeah. it's pretty cool. Cool. Um, I love this. I love this question. Would you be interested in doing Streamly sightings, Prince of Max Caulfield? Which remember, I told you to do. I was like, when we had when we had our uh, when we had our little meetup like two weeks ago, I was like, you need to start doing Streamly signings. <laughs> so okay. there are people out there that want you to. Do, this was uh, I think I got three different questions of the same thing. People asking, can you start doing Streamly signings, Hannah? So okay, well I'll do it, but I need you to show me how because I, I can't I can't even figure out how to use TikTok. Like I. T- I yeah we're gonna do it i told hannah that we'll uh we'll do some kind of like we'll we'll you know we'll do a ship with steph and max all right and then we'll get hannah to have some solo prints and i'll set it on up for hannah so yeah if hannah's down with it it's gonna happen let's do it (laughs) um so talking a a bit more about max do you think that max would go into a music career in a post storm setting and if she did what type of music would she be playing oh i hope she does Either if she doesn't go into a music career in playing like indie folk rock, a la the Life is Strange soundtrack type of sound, I would think that she would go into a career photographing bands as like a, a tour photographer that like there's some really cool girls I know that that ride on the tour bus with with popular bands and like go from city to city and photograph everything and just like document it like uh, really detailed and vividly. And I think this should be amazing at that, or she'd be amazing playing like rhythm guitar in, um, a folk rock band. And I think Chloe would be an amazing lead singer. Heck yeah. I love all that. So to, to round off the life is strange questions, if you had the ability to rewind time, like max, how would you utilize it or would you utilize it? Um, yeah, I, I have, thought about this and, and my, my answer changes every time um this time i would utilize it i would go back in time and i would take i would fix the times where like my stress and my um neurosis and depression and anxiety and whatever my mental instability caused me to be rude or like dismissive mm. of my friends mm. like when i was in high school um, I had some like really powerful f- friendships that I had in elementary school and in middle school, I started going through puberty and my mental illness started getting to be the point where I was just like sh- pushing everyone around me away and like secluding myself and almost feeling like scared of my friends. Like I was so anxious that I just like could not interact. And so I, I think that they really took that personally and didn't understand what was going on. And I didn't know how to explain that to them until like, three weeks ago (laughs) I'm being honest that's fair you know we grow up and we look back at those times and we're like but our brains are so different back then like we just we don't know how to you know yeah but that's I think that's growing up that's learning you know if we we took our 30 year old brains and put them into our teenage self like we wouldn't be where we're at right now like we had to have those issues and situations and things happen in our life for us to be where we're at right now yeah for sure 
but I mean, it's good that you acknowledge, I think it's good that, you know, right. you can look back and say, Hey, yeah, like I shouldn't have done that, but you know, I was a kid. Yeah. So, yeah. but if you had the rewind power, you would go back and you would rewind it. Yeah. I'd be like yeah. less selfish. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. So we had a ton of music questions, which is very exciting. <laughs> and I like, I absolutely love your music. I don't like, I know I didn't really gush about it too much when we met in person, but like, it's just so good. And I listen to it all the time. We listen to it on my stream. Everybody loves it. Uh, it's just great. And I can't wait until I can see you perform live. I'm so excited whenever yeah. that is. But I'm curious, what inspired you to start playing music? Well, I um, was doing acting and I got cast in an indie film where I had to play a pop punk lead singer and guitarist. And my, uh, I didn't know how to play guitar very well. I would taken some guitar, classical guitar lessons when I was 16, maybe like three or four. Mm. Um, but then I quit because my guitar teacher moved away and I was like on to the next obsession. Um, so I just, I learned how to play a little bit and I just like fell in love with playing and singing at the same time. I was like, how am I able to do this? Like music's coming out of me. Like what the heck? And it, I, it's like, it was like magic. And just to be able to like strum a chord and then figure out that I could sing a little vocal melody on top. And, and I just, I was like in awe <laughs> of like being able to play the guitar. So I just started writing songs and I wanted to play live like right away, even though I was not ready to play live by any means. Yeah. But I was living in a house, a big house in Los Feliz with a bunch of artists and several of them were mu musicians and they were really talented and they really shaped me and inspired me and they would go play open mics um at the novel cafe on wilshire back in the day like in koreatown and i went with them and i was like i'm gonna do this and i just was horrible uh -huh. Heard somebody in the audience while I was on stage saying, oh, my God, this is almost over because I was playing a five minute song and it was horrible, Katie. And everybody was like. So embarrassed for me. And then I ran into the bathroom after and I was like, I'm never playing live again. Oh, my God. The journey. No <laughs> the journey. Yeah. Yeah. And look how far you've come. Um, yeah. Like sort of. <laughs> I mean, I I love it all. It's 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 you're very talented. Um, talking about writing songs, we had a member that was curious about your songwriting process. What kind mm -hmm. of things inspire you? Not just lyrically, but also with sounds and melodies. Yeah, um, I would definitely say I'm really inspired by other people's music. Um, bands that I've been listening to since I was a kid and my dad would like introduce me to bands from the 70s and yeah. 60s and 80s that I had I never heard before um, and uh, that really shaped me and then in high school I was just like obsessed with live music so I would get my friends with me and we would drive like three and four hours to see shows because we lived in the middle of nowhere kind of mm -hmm. and um yeah, I kind of forgot where I was going with that and started thinking about concerts. <laughs> I just love music, and um, that really inspires me. Going to shows really inspires me. Going to bars by myself and writing in my diary and people watching and having a musical community here in L.A. All my friends play music, and I love to go to their shows, and I love to support their music and listen to their music. Yeah. They just, like, keep me going, so... Ah, I love that. No, that was one of the things that we need to do together is go to a concert together. We talked about that. that Actually, was... that's what I was asking about tonight because I'm going to a show after this. Oh, my God. If I wasn't having to pack, I would so go with you. Yes, is dude, it one of your friends or is it uh, just a, a different? It's, it's a band that one of my really good friends' bands opened up for on tour back in the day. Oh, heck yeah. Cool. Oh, it's man. It was. It, what was that? The band is called Woods. Woods. All right. Okay. Like forest. Yeah, yeah, like the forest. Well, man, I'm there in spirit. When I get back Thanks. in town, we gotta we gotta try to go to a show. I need to I need to go to a show with you. Um, so let's say let's see. What song of yours would you say is the most story driven, as in personal story or otherwise? Um, I would say that Seasons is the most like chronological story. Um that's very like dear and true to me uh because i wrote it back in 2011 
um, the first like little verse, and then I rewrote the chorus many, many years later. Um, and if not that, uh, it's all pretend. Um, that one's pretty close to me, just because it's a little, it's a little personal. Mm. Okay. I guess all my music's really personal because it just comes right out of my diary. But that's I think that's what's good about it. Like as as somebody who listens to it, I, I relate to it because of the lyrics. Like I'm a very lyrical listener. You know how people listen to music and they listen to like the the actual like instruments or they listen to the lyrics and that whatever one t- gets them into the song. For me, mm-hmm. it's like lyrics are a huge contender if I'm if I'm gonna like a song or not. And then yeah. obviously, and the sound kind of follows kind of beside it but yeah I really listen to the lyrics and I love yeah your lyrics are great you have this amazing storytelling aspect to them and I think that's what draws at least me and I assume a lot of other people into yeah. thanks Katie yeah Thank and also too like hearing about like the 70s and 80s bands that you listen to like I can hear that in your music like it's it gives it's just that vibe it's a very like flower child vibe and like you know what I mean like it's just it's just so freeing you know so just to hear your inspirations it makes sense so yeah thanks I love that. yeah that's what I'm hoping for so I'm glad it's coming through yes so what would you say is your favorite song from your new album I would say uh it's all pretend and lavender daydream yeah because they're both like really honest and um I just yeah I wasn't sure I wanted to put it's all pretend on the record um, and then somebody commented that they really liked it. And I was like, yes, <laughs> I'm so happy. I love it when songs that I'm about to not put on the record, like somebody, like one lone person's like, um, I like this one. And I'm like, I love you. Thank you. I love that. That means it's that reassurance, it's that validation that you like don't know if you're going to have. That's a good way to test it out, you know, is just put songs out there and see how people react to it. Yeah. 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 Let's see. So talking about I uh, talking about performing live and uh, hopefully I'm able to see you perform live at some point. But what's your favorite place you've ever performed your music live? Uh, my favorite place would be the last bookstore in downtown L.A. It's a really beautiful bookstore, huge bookstore. And they have all of this artwork, like sculptural artwork in the bookstore made out of books. So they have like a full tunnel you can go through that's made of books and uh, they had a show there. It was a long time ago, like 2013, but I got to play there, and that was my favorite show. Ah, so are you gonna go on tour for this new album? I would love to go on tour for this new album, but I don't know how to plan a tour, and I've tried to do it in the past and felt really overwhelmed. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna just play some shows here in LA. Uh, I'm trying to put together a record label slash artist collective called cerulean sound and so i'm gonna be putting on showcases showcase shows um around like echo park and silver lake plus in the east part east side of los angeles of my friends music and i'm gonna play it too because um yeah i just want to like push shows on i love doing that awesome (laughs) all right so look out if you're in the la area if you're not in the la area look out for uh for those those dates whenever that happens i'm sure you'll put it on your instagram And uh, that's how you'll see the new music perform live. What would be your dream concert lineup? Like to be able to perform with you, like you can set up the whole thing, anybody you want, like no money's not an issue, like nothing. Who would be your lineup with you? Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I didn't, I, 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 okay. I, I thought when you first started asking this question that like, who, which bands do I, would I want to see? Oh. And then you said, if I performed with them, that's like on another level. So <laughs> I just need a second to recover from imagining that. Um, Eagles, the Beatles, that's too hot, too, too great. And then um, George, yeah, uh, George Harrison by, by himself. I don't know, all of his solo stuff. Um, I don't know. Yeah, t- uh, Joni Mitchell. I don't know. Too great. Too great. Too that great. sounds like an amazing lineup. Oh my god, Fleetwood Mac. There, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, Fleetwood Mac. And then you're the headliner, and they're opening for you. Um. No, I don't want to open for them. <laughs> I think you're okay with that. I, I want to open for them. Uh, <laughs> yes, Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, you. That. That's all. Everything you just mentioned is like right around your sound. Like again, like it just mirrors. Yeah what you grew up listening to. I think that is so rad. I think that's a great lineup. I I would go watch that for sure. 
This is a, a really great question. I don't remember who answered this or asked this, but thank you for asking this question. It's it's awesome. So have you ever had moments of self-doubt with regards to your art, whether it's acting or music, for example, comparing yourself to others or having an artist block? And if so, what helps you to move past that struggle? Oh, yeah, this happens like several times every day. Um, if I'm being honest, like this happened like 45 minutes ago. Um yeah, I, I think that that's like something that everybody goes through um, and to an extent. I think if it gets so bad that it's debilitating and that you can't function, then you need to get help from a professional, therapist, psychiatrist, something. I personally have help from a psychiatrist and a therapist, and that is how I'm able to deal with my self-doubt. I'm also, it's crippling a lot of the time and preventing me from ever preventing me from like so many opportunities that I just I had I've had so many opportunities that I've self-sabotaged you wouldn't even believe I, I like I just choke can't handle it and um so like it when I'm you know I have my medication I have my doctors and most importantly I have my faith um I pray non-stop like even when I'm not praying I'm praying like I'm like constantly just that's like my meditation my uh my like way of dealing is just like to trust in a higher power that's like everything's gonna be okay mm -hmm. even if all hell breaks loose right now even if i ruin everything all i have to do is go to sleep and wake up in the morning and it's it's gonna it's gonna be okay i'm, I'm still gonna be alive as long as i'm still alive it's gonna be okay as long as i'm not you know hurt so yeah i just like really focus on my faith I also have a strong support system around me. I have a really, really good relationship with my partner, really great friends. And um, I, my parents, I love my parents and they support me in my artistic career. So that's helpful. Yeah, I would mirror that 100%. Like just having, knowing that there's something else out there greater than you that can uh, just know, just give you hope, you know, that yeah, like, peace. yeah, peace. Yeah, yeah. So mirror that. That's awesome. I love that. No, I knew that question. I was like, that's such a great question. I knew you would have an amazing answer for it. So um, I hope whoever answered that or asked that question uh, was here and was able to hear that. Um, yeah. You're not uh, alone. <laughs> you're not alone. All right. So this one says, hi, Hannah. I know you love playing guitar. Do you have a favorite brand of guitar? If yes, yes. why? <laughs> My favorite brand of guitar is Fender Guitars. Um, because they're just classic and in, in my opinion, I just love them because they have this certain kind of electric guitar called the Jazz Master. And it's got a really cool, like swervy shape. And um like it's the guitar that all the cool boys play in <laughs> indie rock bands that are in Echo Park. <laughs> and I'm just like obsessed with that guitar and the sound it makes. It kinda has like a, a jangly old like lo-fi kind of cool sound and I have always wanted one and um one day I'm gonna get one <laughs> dang how are they pretty expensive um I'm not really it's just that I like I'm a spender so when I get money like it's gone like that I, and... I watched it I've been in <laughs> I, I watched it it was insane <laughs> chat so oh my no but I mean like you <laughs> she <laughs> she's dead she <laughs> <laughs> we, we went to this like little thrift like I don't know this like little like thrift shop like this little whatever what was it like, a thrift market and uh we come upon this like really cool like uh, person who like creates uh shirts and and clothes and things out of fabrics and Hannah fell in love and it was like I need all of these things but what you did Hannah you ended up buy, uh, buying two things I think um I've two things but, but he was so, so happy he was so happy and you looked really amazing in those two things you bought but yeah. um but yeah I mean there was like there was no like thought it was just like I need this I'm taking it we're like that's it like yeah, no I second thought it. I can't control it it's like it's a problem I'm bipolar I'm when I get when I'm a little bit manic like it just I can't I can't control myself and I was in Whole Foods the other day and I was putting and my boyfriend saw me from across he comes up to me and he goes and I'm like, help, help, help. I'm like, I need you to just escort me to the checkout line because I can't, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. No, 
it's it's good it's good because again what you, what i when i witnessed it you you at least you got something that like i i agreed i was like it's cute it looks good on you and oh, it, yeah, yeah, yeah and you did and you made him really happy yeah. yeah you made him really happy wait what were what was all the stuff you were getting at whole foods though like stuff that you guys actually Ooh. needed to eat for me oh for you so you were hungry then too you were like hungry, yeah, yeah you don't go to the grocery store and you're hungry that's like the worst that's the worst what thing. if you're always hungry <laughs> well then yeah then you're gonna you're, you're gonna need your boyfriend there to help you <laughs> yeah <laughs> direct you to the checkout line um yeah. so how many guitars do you have oh i feel so targeted right no, now i'm just curious that was okay that question came <laughs> sorry that question came before we talked about your like your your uh like I guess needing things uh that question was I was gonna ask it before we went into that dialogue so yeah. I'm not yeah. asking it wondering yet but you don't have to answer it if you don't want I'll answer it I'll answer it okay I have a Fender Telecaster that I got when I was 17 16 um it's got paisley print and it's turquoise Ooh. I have a black Fender La Brea acoustic electric guitar that my uncle gave me I have a classical guitar from Sears catalog from 2003. Where'd you get that? For Christmas in 2003. Oh, you got, oh, it's legit. It's from 2000. <laughs> That's, yeah. Okay. Because my guitar kept it. Oh, yeah. And then I have a blue guild guitar, acoustic electric plug in. And, oh, that's not it. <laughs> I have, I have a, sorry, y'all. <laughs> Don't be sorry. It's good. Musicians have a lot of guitars. Musicians yeah. have a lot of drums. Musicians have a lot of their instrument. Yeah, That's yeah. Standard. And my, my last guitar that I have is a black um, Martin acoustic electric plug-in that I need to get fixed. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, my my dad is a drummer, and he's probably got like ten drum sets right now. So it's not oh, like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not unheard of to, I think that's standard. If you're a musician and you're like, you know, play a lot of music, you tour, you have a lot of your instruments. So yeah. 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 I love that. The Sears one is so interesting. That's a cool mm -hmm. one. That's cool. It's yeah. Got a really unique sound. Ah, yeah. I don't ever get rid of that one. Uh, let's see. So do you have any advice for someone who is just learning how to play the guitar? Yeah, I would just say stick with it and play in increments because it's gonna hurt your fingers and you're gonna get just you're gonna get the, um, discouraged because your fingers are gonna hurt. So play for like ten to fifteen minutes at a time, several times a day, and um, just like spread it out. Give your hands a rest. Stretch your hands. Be good to your hands. Moisturize your hands. I love all your advice. You give the best advice. I feel like I could ask you anything like, you know, what, what season's the best season or to make grow carrots or like what kind of gr t carrot growing tips could you give me? And I feel like you would just like, you would just give me something and it would make sense. I can't, I can't give you any help on that, but I can tell you this right now I'm drinking carrot juice out of this <laughs> chalice. And the reason why I'm drinking carrot juice is because I'm trying to turn my skin orange oh, yeah. and it, if you, I'm not kidding, scientific fact, if you drink and eat enough carrots, your skin will take on an orange hue. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to, I'm experimenting. So you're trying to naturally give yourself a tanner? Yes. Got it. Okay. I, at first I was like, where are you going with this, Anna? <laughs> so you're trying to naturally give yourself like a, a little tint. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, what is happening? I love that. Uh, that's smart. Wait, how long have you been on the carrot juice kick? Um, just like a week. Cool. Do no you, no do results you, yet. No results yet. Okay. Is this like a, a studied thing? Like, have you seen people write articles about how they naturally were able to tone their skin with carrot juice? Um, I bet if I looked into it, I could find that. But I honestly just saw this on Instagram. And I was like, I, I had verified. Like a, a, yeah, yeah. Instagram's verified. TikTok's verified. I believe it. I believe it. And guess yeah. what? Carrot juice is good for you. So it's not like you're doing anything bad. And when my eyesight's going to be like, yes. Later. Yeah. <laughs> so are, did you like, uh, did you get the carrot juice and make it yourself or is it just store bought? Oh, yeah. It's store bought. <laughs> what makes it even worse, Katie, is that I have a juicer. <laughs> <laughs> it smells store bought. <laughs> oh, man. The juicer makes a mess. It does make a mess. I have a juicer too, but fresh carrot juice with like a little bit of ginger and lemon in it. Ooh. Yeah, that's how you make it not taste like 
you shit. You know, you just put some ginger and lemon in it and then it's good. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. If you ever if you ever get like the random whim to to juice your own carrots. But uh yeah, now I'm just picturing you at Whole Foods just taking the entire shelf of carrot juice and uh, <laughs> your partner yeah, having to be like <laughs> or I'm in the produce section. That's my favorite place. I'm just like, "Yes. Yes. Oh, asparagus. Three three bundles of asparagus." And then Easy. I'll go home and eat them all. Yeah, I yes. just love asparagus. Do you eat them raw or do you cook them? Oh, I cook it. Yeah. You cook it? How do you cook your asparagus? Um, with garlic, olive oil, squirt of lemon, salt, pepper. Yeah. Very simple. Oh, <laughs> I love asparagus. Like I'm oh, I love asparagus. Like so getting three bunches of asparagus is not even an issue. Like cause that stuff goes quick. And you just eat it all. Um mm -hmm. all right, let's see. <laughs> oh, I love this question. Um, what is your favorite Taylor Swift album? Oh my goodness. Um, there is one called Red, right? Yes. Yes, Red and 1989. Do you have oh. a favorite song of all time? Is it from one of those albums? Yes, Red. Oh, that's the favorite song as well. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yes. All right. So are you a big Taylor Swift fan then? Yes. Okay. Very <laughs> well, I got this question and I was like, it's so it was so random. So I'm like, I guess it's like somebody who follows you that knows you're a huge Taylor Swift fan. I don't know how anybody could not be a Taylor Swift fan. I mean, she's great. She's, she's great. Right? Like, yeah. 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 I'm a huge fan. I saw her live in 2011. It changed my life. I saw her with my little cousin. She had an extra ticket and my uncle was like, do you want to take her? And I was like, <laughs> it was amazing. She is like, there's no one like her. No. She, she's like unreal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did uh would you consider yourself a Swifty then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I like Taylor Swift, but I wouldn't consider myself a Swifty. Well, know. I wouldn't say that I'm like I wouldn't say like I'm the biggest fan because there are so many people that know her much better than I do and like yeah. a bigger fan. But I definitely love her. I think she's amazing. I would do anything to write a song with her. Oh my gosh, that, manifest that it. Would be... <sighs> <Ha -la -la -la. laughs> That's how that I'm gonna manifest. So that's my manifestation sound. Little <laughs> little dance, little song. I love that. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay, cool. I'm learning some new stuff. I knew I was gonna learn some new stuff today, and I love that. Um, cool. all right, let's kind of take a little a little shift here. Uh kind of this is kind of a life is strangey question, but I put it down in like the personal questions. What small thing happened in your life that had a butterfly effect that led to something much larger happening, if anything? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, when I was in 10th grade, I auditioned to be in this uh, like school program called Governor's School. It's mm. like a summer program where you went away to a college and you stayed there all summer with other kids that were in the 10th and 11th grade. And um, you just like people were there for math or jazz or dance. And I was there for acting. And I made friends with these artists, these kids who were there for art. And they were like, so eclectic and bizarre and it was like I I was, some of them were queer and it was like my first time ever seeing anybody like that and I was like oh my god I need to be with you 24 <laughs> 7 like found my niche and I was blown away by like our friendship and our inspiration and we would go to each other's like performances Aww. and um it like set the tone for the rest of my life like in terms of how I wanted to live in an artistic community uh, surrounded by people who are my friends that were also being creative. And that was in high school? Yeah, high school. Yeah. Wow, how cool is that? That is so cool. And that was out mm -hmm. in your, like, that was out in your little town or? No, um, it was something that was run by the state of North Carolina that was done uh, at one college on the east side of the state and one college on, like, the west side of That's the state. That's so cool. And, um, yeah, it's since lost funding. Big surprise. Ugh. But uh, it, it changed my life. And it changed many kids' lives that went to that because it was uh, very mind-opening and, ex like, evolved. it really encouraged, like, expanding your worldview. Yeah. No, I always think class or schools like that, like, even, like, people that go to, like, arts and sciences schools, like, kids, like, that go to those schools, they're, like, special schools. I always think that's so cool because they, yeah. Yeah, they learn so much and they get they get out 
I don't know, they get out of it more than they would have just going to a regular public school, you know, because they're focused on like yeah, yeah. something that interests them. And I think that that's really cool. Yeah. So for those of you, some people might not know and some people might know that you actually studied neuroscience. Yeah. yeah you got a degree <laughs> in neuroscience, which is like wild. Um, Thank you. Yeah. If someone was interested in studying neuroscience, what would be your top tip or advice for them? Oh, my gosh. First of all, you're so cool. Um, I'm like obsessed with anybody that wants to study neuroscience. Um, I would say that you should take a biology class and a psychology class. And you can do that online for free on like Coursera. Or you could do it at your local community college also for free if you're in the state of California. Because if you don't make a lot of money in California, they hook you up. <laughs> It's amazing, and that's how I survive out here. So thank you, State of California. Um, but yeah, you should take a class and uh, see if you like biology and psychology because neuroscience is the intersection between those two disciplines, and um, it's awesome. So do you use any of your learnings to this day? Um, absolutely not. But <laughs> I just got an internship, so I'm about to start using them again. Wait, you got an internship? Yes. Wait, wait, I, what? You, for what? For neuroscience. Wait, that's so cool. Out here in Los Angeles? Yes, 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 yes. Wait, what are you going to be doing? I'm starting like out really, 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 really slow because I have for, forgotten a lot of stuff. But before I graduated, I was working in a lab at the Children's Hospital of LA yeah. remotely because it was during the pandemic, like helping out with this process called segmenting. And what it is, is like you look at an MRI and you use this special program that creates a 3D model of like a certain part of the brain on the MRI. And then you rotate it around, like you can see the abnormalities there. And so um, I'm doing that again and cool. I'm really excited and uh, haven't started yet, but it's more gonna pick up in the new year a little bit. Um, but hopefully I can eventually get hired yes. because I would like to have a job. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we raise, I know we talked about this a little bit, but we raise a lot of money here in my, my stream for charities. And one of the organizations we raise money for is this organization called Starlight Children's Foundation. And one of their big things is they put gaming stations. So like Nintendo switches and other kind of like gaming streaming services for kids in hospitals. So we have oh. a gaming station at the Children's Hospital of L.A. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, so if you're cool. ever there, go and hunt it down, Hannah. You'll see oh my, my, my name on it, my community's name on it. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's going to say your name on it. Your that is amazing. Yeah. It's got my little, like, streamer logo on it. Yeah. It's really cool. So, yeah. If you, ever, if you ever find it. Yeah. Or if you ever just see them. It. If you ever, because I'm sure you might see them around. Um, but, yeah, those are the gaming stations that we funded. So pretty cool. Whoa, okay. Yeah, and they're really super cool. nice over there too. They're really nice over there because I had to hunt it down and I oh, talked good. to somebody from the hospital and they were just like really cool. So it's a good place to be. Nice. That's so cool. Congrats on that. Thank you. When do you start? Um, well, I have starting with like in order to get to do it, I have to get a bunch of shots. Yes. And I have to get uh, I have to do a bunch of um training, um, like HIPAA protection rule learning stuff like that so I have to do some training and then I should start like in the coming weeks oh, okay like, slowly cool but then it'll really pick up in January heck yeah congrats on that look at that thank you so this is it looks like this is our last one I love your answer for this I see it on here do you play any video games and if so what's your favorite um the sims <laughs> Do you play The Sims, like, yeah. currently? Like, do you play it, like, randomly now? I'm not allowed. You're not allowed. I'm not allowed by myself. <laughs> Wait, you're not no, allowed really to can't. play by yourself? Or you're not, you've, you've made yourself not be able to play? Like, you yourself? I've ruled. I have ruled that there will be no Sim playing right now. Got it. Anytime in the near future. Yeah. Got it. How many hours do you think you have on Sims? <laughs> I don't want to know, but I, I had a problem. I had a problem when I was 21, I was sick and I was playing the Sims 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I would not get out of bed. I would play in my bed with my laptop 
playing The Sims, and I would just I went on vacation to the beach and stayed in the hotel room, laying in the the bed, playing The Sims the entire time. They couldn't get me to leave the room. I couldn't stop. I can't leave the fantasy world, and so I can't not allowed to play The Sims. I I'm not gonna allow you to play The Sims. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Wait, what kind of families did you have? Like, what were the stories of your Sims? Oh, just myself and whoever I was in love with. And <laughs> okay. All right. Many, 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 many different men. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Don't you just like, I mean, you're not, you're not allowed to go back, but like, don't you ever just wonder how Sim Hannah's is doing? Oh, <laughs> she's definitely dead. <laughs> die so fast and then they mourn they mourn for sim days and days and i'd be like all right enough exit out move on put the urn in the trash we gotta keep going in this house sorry it's so warm so you would just literally go from man to man your your sim hannah self would just go from man to man throw their urns in the trash move on to the next one wow your children wow children with them and like creating an array of like children yeah i don't know why that was what was fun to me but or i would have like a really strong family unit and then the the patriarch would inevitably inevitably die and then everyone would just be crying the whole time and i was like you know what this is just not gonna work like let's just let's just keep it separate you have your own house i have my own house so <laughs> you ended up really you separated the man from the house because you didn't he want them to get attached he never caught in the he never came in in the first place so the kids just stayed with you. All right. All right. It sounds yeah. like uh, you did the 100 babies challenge with yourself and Sims. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love I honestly I, I love that for you. That's great. Um, That's great. Rosebud forever. <laughs> yep. Rosebud forever. Yes. All the money in the world. All right. So we've learned a lot today about Hannah. Uh, one is that she's never allowed to play Sims uh, again. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we're going to move on here to some songs, which I'm really excited about. Yeah. Um, but uh, before we get into the songs, is there any like last words you want to say to, to kind of close out this interview? Anything you want to promote moving forward? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, thank you so much, Katie. This yeah. has been so fun. And I just had a really great time chatting with you on here. You're so easy to talk to and you made me laugh and been great i want to say thanks to everybody for 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 tuning in and listening and um yeah i just put out uh, my third record um waking up to tomorrow it's available on wherever you can find it on streaming services it's available on spotify um and apple music and uh yeah i'm just gonna play some i'm gonna sing some songs uh from the record and my boyfriend Aaron is going to play guitar for me because I have, well, to be honest, I have my nails grown out right now and I'm really into having some nails right now. So I'm not playing guitar because I can't really do that with long nails. So he's going to play for me and I'll tell him to come down. Okay. Aaron! <laughs> uh, they played a little, like a little like taste tester for me earlier like literally like three seconds and I was like all right this is gonna be great for you guys so yeah I'm so excited that you wanted to play yeah thank you for having us all yeah. right I'm gonna let him sit down first so we can like adjust around the neck of the guitar okay thank you everybody who's hanging out with us still appreciate y'all being here what's up Aaron hey how's it going good thanks for being on Make sure we're both in frame. Make sure we're good. Okay, cool. Um, here's one. How does it really feel after all this time? Tomorrow, a portal 
that and learn how to play that like not a long time ago so thank <laughs> you oh it was so pretty everybody in the chat was like freaking out they love that oh yay thanks thank you thanks Aaron. yeah yeah this is fun all right what are we doing next uh, seasons. seasons let me get some of your touch music thank you all out there for hanging out if you're just tuning in this is hannah tell and uh we're listening to some awesome songs from and this is your seasons is from what album is this one yeah, all three of these songs are from my my record that I just put out uh, awesome. a couple weeks ago called Waking Up to Tomorrow. Yeah, and you can check it out on, uh, I have the Spotify link up above pinned to my chat, guys, so you guys can click that and go check out all of Hannah's music, but the latest record as well. Thanks, Katie. Yeah. <clears throat> Summer turns to fall, I try to forget it all. Imagine what it's like to not feel small. They say this too shall pass, but this darkness seems to last. And I can't swim when the waves crash in this fast. Seasons elapsing time, always growing older, can't shift the paradigm. Reasons still have to find the source of all my sadness. 
insecurities become my key. I've collected jars of tears and been conquered by my fears. And some days all I want is to disappear. Okay. <laughs> Loved it. Thanks, Yay. Um, we have one more for you guys. Uh you want should we go ahead or Yeah, I love I mean I feel I mean I know there's like a hundred people watching as well, but I feel like I'm getting a private concert and I just feel so special. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. This is so awesome. I feel like it's like connected to like you and you right now as we're like singing yeah. this. It's cool. It's you guys sound amazing <laughs> together, by the way. It sounds great. Thank you. Yeah. This is our first Twitch show. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited it can be on my show. There's many hope. Yeah, we'd like to do some more Twitch shows. Hey. Cool. Well, this is a song called Lavender Daydream. I'm going to pull up some lyrics because the second verse keeps coming out of my head. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Ready? <clears throat> Thank you. 
I'm getting, this is my favorite song I've heard so far. This is one of my favorites. Oh my God, so beautiful, so angelic, ethereal. Uh, harmon the harmonies they love. Do you guys singing together? Beautiful scenes, just beautiful yeah. scenes. Uh, they love this. This is gonna be in my repeat for 27 for a 24 7 playlist. People love that what? song. If Mother Earth had a voice and could sing. <laughs> you both wow. sound so amazing together. The harmonies are so good. They absolutely love that so much. That was their favorite Yay. one. Yeah. Thanks. Hannah, you have the voice Hi. of an angel. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Twitch. But we'll definitely have to do some more Twitch streams. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Now you got your uh, you got back into your Twitch account. Yeah, and next time we'll like practice for a few days beforehand so we can like relax. No, you guys, that was amazing. You guys, yeah, I was surprised. I didn't know I was going to hear you sing, Aaron. You guys sounded great together. I wasn't really sure I was going to either. It was sort of just... Uh, Thank you for um, singing. It felt it, like it was, the, it was the end of the show. It was like our big moment, so... It just happened. I love that. Oh, that's really cool. That's cool that you guys can just like communicate without communicating. Like you just feel it and you just like, that's awesome. And then the support, that's so cool. I love that. My heart. <laughs> Oh, that's so great well hannah thank you so much and aaron thank you so much for both being on my plus one i do appreciate it very much um again just if there's anything else you'd like to say before uh we we head you off just thank you so much for having us katie yeah had a great time yeah, thanks for the opportunity yeah awesome. yeah this was fun i can't wait to hang out again hannah i'm gonna have to come over to your guys's place so we can hang together and we have to go to a show soon i hope you guys have an incredible time at the show you're going to tonight um thank you yeah <laughs> You're coming oh, we're tonight. Going. Oh, he okay. was like i can't go i have a meeting at 9 a.m and I, like the motto at this house is oh always go to the show so we're gonna go well, you gotta I'm go you go. just gotta go show face you gotta go show face but this was great <laughs> hannah again thank you so much and everybody out there watching thank you guys so much for watching this uh interview we really appreciate it and thank you so much for the great questions you asked hannah as well yes thank you all right hannah we'll talk soon all right, thank you guys for being here. Thanks all so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye.